Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Crawl TV. Today, we are working on my truck again. And the process of working on this truck is to convert it from a work truck that was strictly utilitarian to something that I can now enjoy. I've switched career fields. I don't need a truck with a ladder rack and toolboxes all over it. And so I've been putting some time and money into this truck to get it where I want it to be. Now in the last episode, we replaced the brakes with the PowerStop Z36 truck and tow kit, which is super helpful for towing around a trailer and taking this Jeep up to places like the Rubicon Trail and being able to stop and safely, you know, control the truck as I'm pulling all that weight behind me. However, this truck does not have trailer brakes. It didn't come from the factory with trailer brakes. And so today's project is adding trailer brakes to this truck, adding an OEM controller, and using a security bypass module and a programmer to actually get this completely like tied into the infotainment system on the truck. So this is a 2019 Ram 1500 Bighorn four, four wheel drive. And today's project is gonna be adding trailer brakes to it so that we can safely tow our Jeeps around the country. Let's get started. Okay, so first things, we have our box here. I picked this up from American Trucks. It's a website that I found online that had a tuner included in the kit so that I don't have to take this truck to a dealership. I live out in the middle of absolutely nowhere and I don't wanna spend my weekend driving all the way into downtown San Diego somewhere so that somebody can get to my truck when they get to it and waste all my time. So. Uh, I chose to go with this option so that I can just do everything from home. This option is more expensive. It ends up coming out to about the same price, whether you go to the dealership and have them flash the uh, ECM, it's probably gonna be about 100 to 150 bucks, or if you buy the tuner. But in here, we have our OEM brake controller. So this is actually a fully functional piece that will bolt directly in to our switch panel here where that dead blank space is. So that's really nice. I like the fact that this is gonna look factory and I'm not gonna have a big honking aftermarket trailer brake controller in the truck. Um, in addition to that, we have a bracket for our trailer brake module. And this is again, another OEM part. And this will actually bolt in kind of like in that configuration right there up under this dash here. And we'll get to that in a minute. The next part that we have is our bypass module. So this is an OBD Genie part where you unplug uh, the two wires that are gonna be hanging down by your kick panel here. Once again, we will get to that. Uh, and then we'll be putting those wires into this bypass module so that we can program the truck. Next, we have these screws and clips which are gonna hold this bracket in place up under the dash and then we have our actual trailer brake module, which you won't see if you're driving around. It's tucked up out of sight, out of mind, but this is an important piece and probably the most expensive piece of this whole kit uh, to actually make the trailer brake controller function. And then lastly, we have this. This is another OBD Genie part. This is the programmer. So it's very simple. It's got like a single green light on it, I think. And uh, instructions are very simple. You have the bypass module hooked up, then you go ahead and put the vehicle in run, plug this in, wait for the green light, and then you remove it and you're all set. You can go ahead and remove the security bypass module, plug everything back in, and theoretically, then you have trailer brakes tied into your infotainment system and you will see that up here and everything should function properly. Now, the risk involved with doing all of this DIY versus taking it to a dealership is if you, for some reason, brick your truck, if you, um, if you have existing check engine codes that you're not aware of, or the security bypass module malfunctions or something, you could potentially put your vehicle into like a limp mode or, or you know, cause another problem that a dealership would be more than happy to take care of and not charge you for, but if you do it at home, you're gonna to have to get your vehicle towed to a dealership. So you have to accept the risk involved there. Uh, I'm willing to accept that risk. I don't think that this system is too complicated to mess up, um, knock on wood. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this install with first getting this brake module and bracket installed, and then we will go from there. So the first thing I did is I grabbed all of my tools and laid them out. 
smartest thing to do is probably put these tools in the shade or they're not going to burn your hands when you go to grab them but um, I'm not that forward thinking and even when I am I'm still not going to do it so um, the important thing is that you have all the correct tools before you start the job I think for this all we're really going to need is as low as a seven millimeter wrench uh, maybe a, a socket that size I have a 3 8 drive socket set here because my Torx bits are also 3 8 If I choose to use Torx wrenches, I also have those here. And then I just have a flathead screwdriver for popping panels and a small Phillips head screwdriver for undoing the top of our center console. All of these are Tekton tools. That's basically all I use. I absolutely love these tools. If you're in the market for them, go check them out. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a 10 millimeter here and we are gonna go disconnect the negative from our battery. We're not really doing anything to the truck that requires this, but it's kind of a good safety measure to just go ahead and pop the hood, get that taken care of now, so that uh, we're not gonna throw any weird check engine codes or anything as we go through this process. With that battery disconnected, it's now time to dig into this. We're gonna start with a seven millimeter socket on our little ratchet here. And we are just gonna remove these two seven millimeter screws at the bottom of our dash. So this should all come apart super easy. And just make sure that when you take these out, you set them somewhere where you're not gonna lose them immediately. With those screws out of the way, this panel pops out. Uh, these do kind of like require a bit of force before they finally pop out. Don't be afraid to just give it a little bit of pressure. This is a better view of what we're looking at now. I've got this panel removed from beneath the steering column and you can see kind of up in there where we're gonna be installing that brake module. So if you actually look a little bit closer here, I'll zoom in, that square hole there is actually gonna be what we're mounting that bracket to. So we'll open up that hardware kit and we're gonna pop in those little uh, push pin screw hole. Uh, I don't have the correct name for them. There's three of them. We're going to push them into those square holes and then we'll screw that bracket in place. That brake module controller snaps into that bracket and we can move on from that. This is the hardware we're using and these are the things that I'm talking about. I just don't know what they're actually called, but the way these work is they pop into those square holes. Try and get the camera to focus a little bit better. These pop into those square holes and then you can put screws through these. So the bracket is now installed and I want to show that to you guys here so you can just kind of get a better view of it. Again, it's very hard to film under this dash, but that's what it looks like when it's fully in place. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That was kind of pain in the butt. Um, using one of these short handled number two Phillips head screwdrivers is definitely my suggestion because it's just a tight place to get your hand in there to try and tighten those screws down. Once you get those in, now you have your bracket installed, you can go ahead and put the control module in that if you'd like. But what I'm gonna do since we have this space available to us is I'm gonna reach up into this dash area and I'm gonna pull down this bundle of wires. And right here is where the pigtails are for that harness controller. So you just have to kind of undo the tape that's on them and get those pulled out. I'm gonna set the camera down so that I can do this because I can't do it one-handed. And I'll pull those out and show them to you. There's only two plugs and there's no way to mix them up because they're different. Those will plug into that harness or that uh, that module, and then we can snap that module into that bracket. You can see that this module has three tabs on the forward side, one on the aft. There's only one way that it can snap into that bracket because of those three slots there and the one slot on this side. So let's go ahead and plug these in. We'll snap that in place, and then we'll get... This is all OEM so far, so this is all very straightforward. This is how it's done from the factory. But beyond this point is where we get into using the bypass module and the tuner and everything. So, And remember, the battery is still unplugged at this point, so nothing we're going to do is going to affect anything until we reconnect. Now, with that fully installed, we need to next focus on our bypass module. So I did locate the plugs. If you go under the dash and you look directly up, it's these two here, and you'll unplug them 
from right there. It's kind of a dark area, so this bypass module is connected to those two pigtails there, so they're disconnected from what they were in. They're in this. This should be bypassing it, and now we need to um, we need to put the trailer brake controller in. On the top of our dash here, we've got two Phillips head screws, one there and one there. We're going to undo those, and then we're going to pop this whole piece off so that we can get this blank panel out, and this is what we will be replacing. Now, with a delicate but forceful tug, we're going to pop this center console out. There we go. And we're going to it's going to have a bunch of connections on the back, so it's not just going to fall out, but we're just going to get in behind here so that we can access this bottom panel here. And what we'll do is we'll pull this just this individual piece out, and then we'll work on this by itself. I decided that the best tool for this job is the individual Torx, not Torx sockets. We've got some T15s on the back side of this that we'll have to remove to pop this out, and the easiest way to do it is going to be with a Torx tool, not a Torx socket. So we'll pop that out now. It looks like there's only about four screws. Now, correction, that was actually only two Torx screws. So there was one in this corner and one in that corner, and then there's four tabs that you have to release. And this whole piece will slide out the front of the dash. So now that we have this out, we can work on removing this blank. We'll install the OEM brake controller. And then we need to locate the pigtail somewhere in this mess. There should be a dead-ended wire. I think it's right here. There's a dead-ended wire that will plug into the brake controller so that we can actually utilize that function on that new part. In order to remove this piece, I just used a flathead screwdriver here to pry plastic clips. So there are just clips on top and bottom. That piece will pop out. And then we can grab our new piece, which is right here. And It'll look just like that. We're going to plug this in right here. Should snap in place. So that was really, really easy. I just needed to use both hands. Now that we have this reconnected, the next step that we need to do is get that pigtail. So I undid it and it's this guy here. This is our trailer brake. And this is what I unplugged to get this piece out. So that is gonna be our traction control and tow haul switch. So. We'll make sure to plug both of these back in. We're gonna screw this part. We're gonna snap this part back in and then we're gonna screw it back to our dash. We're gonna put this back together and then we're about ready to hook the battery back up once we do that. So the dash went back together in three seconds. That's a super easy process to put that back in, put those two Phillips head screws in and you're done there. We have everything hooked up now. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect this negative terminal on our battery. And then we'll go ahead and use that OBD2 tool to tune this thing. So, you know, if everything goes right, the truck won't just turn into a complete brick. The trailer brakes will work. And the next time that I need to tow something, I can do it with an OEM brake controller, which is really nice. And I've heard great reviews of these controllers working really well, so I'm excited to use it. There we go. Okay. We're gonna jump back over here to the truck now. I'm leaving this taken apart because remember, I still have to undo that bypass module after this is all done. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of set this to the side and I'm gonna grab that OBD2 tool now and I'm gonna plug it into the OBD and um, theoretically this should all work. Again, referring to these super simple instructions, leave the vehicle in the run position. So I'm gonna go ahead and Hit the power without the brakes. Key fob not detected. Where's my keys? They need to be a little closer, I guess. Try that again. Hit the power. We are in accessory mode now, so it's not running, but power is on. We're gonna plug this in, and a green light should turn on on this somewhere. I don't know where the green light is, but let's see how this goes. So there's our OBD2 right there. It's sideways because the dash is taken off. We're going to plug this in. We've got a blue light, red light, red light. Okay, you guys, so I did get the green light. This wasn't actually in the run position, so it stayed red. It freaked me out because I have put a vehicle into limp mode with one of these before, but I just pushed the key again and you know, unplugged this and replugged it. 
I got the green light, it honked the horn on the truck, and now I have trailer brakes set up in this truck. The last thing to do before reconnecting your battery is to remove the security bypass, plug that back in, and then you can reconnect the ground on your battery. Reinstall this panel. We're just gonna push that into place, put those two screws in the bottom of it, and then we can work on programming the trailer brake controller in the infotainment system. So now we are fully integrated. We have our brake controller installed here. And if I squeeze this, I should see it on the dash. There it is. You can go zero to 100. And you can see our gain function is set at three right now. If I want to adjust that, all I have to do is push this positive or negative here. So plus or minus, we're gonna add some gain. Let's go to five. Now our gain is at five. Still works really well when I squeeze it. And we can move on to our settings. So in our controls here, we can go, or sorry, it's actually settings. In our settings here, we can scroll down to trailer brake. That's a new line that wasn't there before. We can tap on trailer brake and we can see the current trailer brake. I set it up as car. You can't give them custom names, but you can actually um, select what kind of trailer it is so that if you have multiple trailers, say you've got a car hauler trailer and then you also have a horse trailer, you can name them like that so that you know which trailer you're using. And that way when you hook it up, uh, it's very easy to select your trailer because different trailers have different brakes. So our car hauler trailer is going to have light electric surge, light electric over hydraulic, heavy electric over hydraulic. We have light electric surge. So um, you'll select those settings. You can go back. It's pre like pre-tuned so that when you hook up your trailer, you just select it. You're good to go. And then you can use your trailer brakes with this OEM controller. It just looks so nice, such a factory finish. Uh, I'm really happy with the ease of install, the fact that the truck did not go into limp mode for any reason, everything seems to be working just fine. And now I have trailer brakes. So I can use that versatile car hauler trailer that I got from Fabform Industries, the one I bought over at Ronco Trailers in Vista. And um, we'll be a little bit safer when we go out to the Rubicon this summer. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have this leftover bypass module, OBD module, and this blank plate, you can store them somewhere safe or just junk them. You're not going to need them again. I don't plan on uninstalling any of this stuff ever, so I'm just going to throw mine away. And that does it. So that is the complete beginning to end process of installing trailer brakes in a 2019 and up Ram 1500. There are even more upgrades planned for this Ram 1500. So if you guys watched this video and enjoyed it, please stick around, consider subscribing to Crawl TV. The next thing on the list is a set of Raceline wheels for this truck. So I've now installed airlift uh, suspension, air ride in the back so that I can tow. I've installed Z36 power stop truck and tow brakes on this thing so that I can stop when I want it to, <laughs> when I want to stop. And now we've installed trailer brakes so that I can stop a trailer when I want to. Um, as I transform this thing from a work truck into kind of a more personal, like daily driver slash weekend warrior truck, a lot of upgrades are coming along with that. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you later.